Good. I'm rocking. Okay, you can hear me now though, right? Okay, I'm going to apologize because I'm a wanderer, so I'm going to walk in front of the screen and do everything that they say professional speakers shouldn't do. But yeah, by way of introduction, I'm Jeff Murray. I actually do not live in the Valley anymore. I live in Augusta, Georgia. Moved down about nine years ago, I think. But all my family's here, and fortunately, I was able to come up here for B-Sides last year and this year. All my family's here. I get to kill two birds with one stone. I get to geek out and get to see my family, so it's awesome. So I would argue, if you're not getting up to speed on hardware solutions, and we'll get into different hardware solutions, red team, blue team, doesn't matter. The industry and the bad guys are going to roll right over you. By hardware, I mean things like you being able to possibly check your wireless access point to see if it's been owned. Not software, firmware. Being able to take your wireless access point, dump the firmware, and reflash it. Build your own wireless access points. Same thing, walk through your building and see if somebody's sitting there with you know, a malicious Bluetooth device, something like that. So basically what this is, is going to be a quick chat about hardware. Hardware in general and what is currently out there. And this is just, I'm, I'm just scratching the surface. But ultimately, grab on. We're ready to go. We're going to talk about software-defined radio. We're going to talk about owning hardware. Um, how many of you have a PlayStation? PS3, PS4, okay. PS4 has been broken, if you weren't aware of it. Uh, I'm gonna show you the tool that you can use to get in there and uh, um, use it in anger, basically. Uh, CAN bus, you wanna treat, you know, tweak your hoopty out there? I have a 2003 Ford Focus. One interesting thing that I did is, and I talked about this during my workshop, the damn check engine light used to come on all, all the time. It rang great. But the oxygen sensors on the Ford Focus SVT are really expensive, and they burn up about every six months. So what I did is I created a little device that hooked into the CAN bus port, and as soon as it saw the code for a bad oxygen sensor, it sent the reset. <coughs> so basically, I wasn't bothered by the check engine light. And as far as I know, actually, I haven't seen the check engine light in a while, so I haven't checked my code lately, so hopefully valid codes are coming through. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, other USB hacking tools, things like that. Again, hardware devices. Not software stuff, hardware devices. And then um, if we have time, you know, I, I know there was a talk this morning on Raspberry Pis. Um, there's a ton, ton of small form factor PCs out there now. Linux, uh, Windows, Internet of Things. You can run Windows 10 on hardware now. So, uh, I mean, little hardware now, little Intel Edison board, something like that. We're going to go into that. So, now is the time for you to bomb a nose if this doesn't sound like your, your thing. But what I did do is because of the RFID, deuces, dude. Um, <laughs> but in honor of uh, the talk that you were hoping to probably see, I did add a RFID hacking tool in. I did that this morning. Uh, and no, it, it, you know the drill. Um, not gonna tell you my employer, who cares? They don't care what I do after hours as long as they don't break the law. Um, same thing. The big thing here is as far as SDR, it, it depends on where you are, whether it's legal to listen to some of the stuff that's freely going through your body as airwaves. So, uh, long, long story short, if you do something illegal based on anything you see here, it ain't my fault. Okay, software defined radio. So software defined radio, I'm looking at, how many of you weren't in my workshop yesterday? Wow, man, okay. It, it was a Friday, I understand. So software defined radio, think of the radio with tubes and all that or a car radio from you know, your hoopty car from the 1990s. Transistors or tubes, what have you. 
Software defined radio has taken all of that circuitry that demodulates that frequency modulated or FM signal, AM signal, all of that, put it into hardware or software. So basically, what a radio is now, even in the newer cars, is it is taking the analog signal going through the air, converting it to ones and zeros, and that's where the radio stops. Everything else is in software. What, what would be an advantage to that? Being able to configure it, tune it, if you can get access to the firmware, or in this case, this RTL SDR dongle, this guy here was originally designed for TV reception. An enterprising Russian, you know, they're, they're pretty crafty sometimes, the, an enterprising Russian said, hey, it doesn't have to be used just for TV because it's taking analog radio waves, converting it to ones and zeros. So I'll write a driver that takes this dongle, and I apologize, I got some right over there, and via software decode FM radio, AM radio, um, ACARS, um, you know, flight aware, some of those websites out there, it's scary as hell that you can see where every aircraft is now. Well, how that's getting there is a software defined radio listening to the transponder information coming from the airplanes. You can do that for free. You can do that with a $20 TV dongle that my, my slides from the workshop yesterday will be posted Monday, I think. And you can just walk the dog on it. So really easy. So for under 20 bucks, you can have your own software to find radio. And you're able to see from 30 megahertz up to about 1.8 gigahertz. That's a lot of spectrum. Yesterday, we were looking at pager signals. Uh, pager signals like the ones at the hospital here are not encrypted. You would not believe what's coming over those pager signals. You want to see your stats clear down to what diseases you have? Sit there and listen to the pager signals. OK, so software defined radio. The RTL SDR basically kicked off the software defined radio as we know it. The barrier to entry beforehand was right around 1200 bucks. Once the $20 solution hit, then a bunch of other folks decided, a bunch of other companies decided, hey, we can come up with solutions that are probably a little bit more expensive, but have finer tuning, more filtering, things like that. One problem with the RTL SDR is that if you have a strong radio station next to, you know, adjacent to where you're sitting and actually receiving a signal, sometimes it can actually crowd that signal out. So you're hearing a radio station at like 40 megahertz when it should be at 88 to what 118. So a lot of what's going on here is either broadening out, in the case of the Funcube Dongle Pro, 150 kilohertz up to 1.9 gigahertz. Um, SDR play, one kilohertz up to two gigahertz. And then um, Hack RF, that one transmits. It's been out for a while. Michael Osman, who is a rock star when it comes to hardware, 10 megahertz up to 6 gigahertz will transmit. It's milliwatts, but you can actually transmit. One of the things that they were doing at uh, Black Hat a couple years ago was confusing phones because they were modulating GPS signals. So sitting there with your phone right next to a Hack RF, it was saying you were in Lithuania. So uh, Lime SDR, this is a new one, and it transmits, and it's got, I think it's right around one watt, which is a lot. And if you look at the prices of these, Lime SDR 299, they just came out with a mini version for 149, uh, Hack RF 299, and then you know it goes down from there. So there's a lot of them out there. The only thing I would caution you on is these are really cheap on uh, Alibaba. Um, I'm drawing a blank on some of those Chinese, uh, Chinese sites. Or just eBay. You get what you pay for sometimes. 
buy from somebody that has a lot of you know positives you know they instead of you know a bunch of negatives this thing sucked it didn't have anything inside the plastic you know something like that but in short the barrier to entry has came way down so GSM you can decode GSM now you can create your own GSM base station out of a Lime SDR Pretty cool stuff. Okay, as far as software, I added this just I added this in here just because this is free. It's called SDR Sharp. Why would you think it's called SDR Sharp? Because it's written in C Sharp. Excellent. Uh, it's closed source now. It used to be open source. HDSDR is open source. So if you want to roll your own software fine radio application, you can take his code and do so. Uh, you can schedule recordings here, which is actually pretty cool with HDSDR. So if you know that the ISS, the International Space Station, is going to be flying over your house at you know, between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m., then you can actually have HDSDR, HDSDR running on your laptop, your computer, what have you. And then it turns on, records for an hour, turns off, you wake up, figure out what's going on. Or in a lot of cases, what I've used this for is digital. I just want to record overnight 10 megahertz worth of spectrum and see what's there. So um, I'm an am amateur radio operator. I like to know what's going on with the uh, ham radio satellites. So another reason to record that spectrum. But either app works pretty well. Now, if you're uh, if you're a baller and have a Mac or uh, yeah. Basically a Mac. They're still expensive, aren't they? No? The Mac people are like... Um, long story short, you can get the raw RTL SDR software, the, the Russian guy, and the group that he belongs to. You can actually turn around and download that, um, actually running the raw software, hack5.org. You're not a security guy unless you at least watch hack5.org hack videos a couple times. Um, they have a great video on the RTL SDR, the little $20 dongle, and using the, the original software from the command line. Uh, both Linux and Mac, GQRX, it's open source, it works very well. So we're talking free software, at a, at a minimum, a $20 TV dongle, and you've got software-defined radio that you can listen to signals, analog signals plus decode digital signals, pagers, etc. cetera, um, water meters. Uh, one thing that we did yesterday during the workshop is I showed a packet capture. I call it a packet capture because those airwaves are still layer one, right? In the OSI model, it's layer one. But uh, somebody near my mother's house has a weather station. So I actually finished the decoding of it, for those of you that were in my workshop, and it's just sending peaks, modulates peaks, and up is a one, nothing's a zero, and it's just spaced out every half second. So you can decode his weather station, because I'm cheap and I want to buy a weather station. Um, but pretty cheap. Okay, also on uh, Linux and Mac, if you really get into it, GNU Radio, it's a beast. Uh, and make sure your laptop has some horsepower. It does compile under Windows, but I would not recommend that. Just bite the bullet, download a Linux distribution that already has it compiled, op optimized in, has all the plugins, and just run it. But uh, Michael Osman, again, rock star. He has written some very thorough, some of them are two hours of tutorials to really get in and just start decoding signals with the raw software. Um, Ballant, Ballant Sieber, he, he's excellent too. His videos are all out there on the YouTubes and then he's written a bunch of tutorials also. So pretty much there's a solution as far as software defined radio from twenty dollars to, I, mean, I wouldn't spend more than a thousand. I wouldn't spend more than five hundred. Free software, 
barrier to entry is very small because you would not believe, and we were having this discussion during my workshop, what is actually going through the air now. It's, it's crazy. Well, going through you, right? It's all going through you. Okay, so as far as hardware exploration, or I would say possible exploitation, there is a, a little USB dongle made by Travis Goodspeed. If, uh, if Einstein and a silicon chip had a baby, it would be Travis Goodspeed. I made that up on the fly and it was really stupid, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was really stupid. Anyway, the good fit. Uh, send him an email, he'll send you the PCB for about five dollars in parts uh, from DigiKey or any electronic supplier you can solder your own. It is SMD parts. So if any of you that have soldered those little SMD parts you know, where you sneeze and all your parts just went all over the place, uh, some of you are laughing because you've done it too. Um, but if you want, he'll send you a PCB for free. In fact, He's looking at a revision of the PCB. So last time I sent him, uh, I, th I threw him five bucks just for shipping because a lot of people can't afford shipping. Sent him five bucks and he sent me 30 PCBs. I don't know what I'm gonna do with 30 PCBs, all I needed was one. But if you want to actually buy one, Adafruit, for $49. <coughs> so what does this guy do? What this guy does is He's got a lot of pinouts on him that allow you to hook up to the chips on a motherboard itself and then start actually tampering with signals. One of the things that we can do, even if the chip is um, and the firmware is encrypted, is we can do something called a side channel attack. What that is, is we glitch it. And by glitching it, what we do is we, we actually stop the power real quick to a couple, uh, quick to a couple of pins and see what it does. And eventually, sometimes we can catch that cycle in the chip, the crypto running in the background, glitch it, and then get in, dump the firmware. So that's just one thing that you can do with this. I've programmed a ton of different little devices with the good fit. A um, lot, of, lot of information out there, uh, great tool, $49, or depending on your soldering skills, very cheap. Okay, yardstick one. This is kind of software defined radio, but Michael Osman would say it's not. But this is a sub one gigahertz tool, and it covers transmit and receive in the ISM bands. So these are the bands that are open. The, the FCC said low power, um, again, like the weather stations, things like that. Don't need licensing as long as you don't broadcast above this and you submit a test report that says you're not going to bleed all over everything else. So what this guy does from 300 and, uh, 300 to 348, 391 to 464, 782 to 928, it allows you to actually go in and via Python command line send packets, radio packets to a hardware device. Again, wireless access point, uh, weather station, uh, Nest thermostat, you know, those had a big vulnerability a while back. You know, you want to test your Nest thermostat, get one of those guys. Or if you want to just listen to the traffic and see if you can decode it, $20 RTL SDR. But it does all these different modulation schemes and um, RFCAT is the firmware, comes pre-flashed with it. You can actually build one of these too, they'll send you a PCB. I would not advise you to do that, I gave up. Um, I, th I thought I was going to build one. I wasn't. But again, there's a link on every one of these slides to further information. I obviously don't have enough time to go into every one of them. Ubertooth. So the Ubertooth is dedicated to Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy sniffing. Transmit and receive. So a friend of mine gave me these really cool earbuds. And they had a little heart rate sensor in them. So I fire up my, my Uber tooth and just hit play. And I'm watching a whole bunch of Bluetooth devices bounce back and forth and everything. And I see this one that says, Jeff's Fitbit. And I see another one that just says, it had a 
kind of a scrambled name. I wasn't quite really sure. I think it was maybe some binary thing that it was throwing. So record. And then I just sit there and I start watching it go through. There's my heart rate um, and a bunch of other values that I won't go into. But I mean, like blood pressure, things like that. I thought it was just a heart rate monitor. But it's, got, it's tracking blood pressure, everything. It's not encrypted. Now, the thing is, is somebody like me, I don't care if anybody goes, God damn, he's going to have a heart attack pretty soon. <laughs> but, but realistically, some people don't want somebody to just sit there and sniff that type of information. You know, it's an invasion of privacy. A lot of people get pretty freaked out about that. It's in the clear. You can do that with your Ubuntu. 119 um, Adafruit has something very similar to this now. If you go to adafruit.com, that's right around $20, but it's not as fast. So you may actually lose Bluetooth packets, but it, it, it'll get you there. And then if you're like, well, I know I'm missing packets, then you know, go for the dedicated tool. But it's not software-defined radio because it's dedicated to a specific purpose, Bluetooth, and decoding Bluetooth packets. Whereas, again, those software-defined radio devices, it runs the gamut. OK, in honor of the, uh, the speaker that you wanted to see, um, if you want to hack uh, RFID tags and RFID readers, all those smart cards, uh, Proxmark uh, 3, they're up to revision 4. This is, they have an entire kit, or they have one that's just the reader and a couple of cards that you can then program. But this will actually allow you to take a card, hold it up against it, and you just clone the card. So pretty easy. And then you can either haul this thing around, or you can burn a copy of the card, and then you've got a copy of that person's card. So there is some basic crypto in a lot of that RFID stuff, but for the most part, it's wide open. And the problem is, is the spec that it's based on there's so many devices out there, there's no way they're going to be able to get all those devices fixed. I mean, hotels, there was a big, uh, you know, I live in Augusta, Georgia right now, and Atlanta had a big string of hotel room thefts. And what they had been doing is actually cloning RFID cards. They just sit there in the bar, set their little device right there next to the person's hotel key, and then away they went. So um, very, very cool. Again, can pretend to be a reader or a tag. Or if you're, I, I think now, if you're within eight inches of the card, it will send um, RF to it and wait for a response back so you can clone it without even actually touching the card. So pretty cool. Yes. Um, well, so like, so for instance, like at a corporation, if I cloned a card, I could just sit there. Yeah, I can just scan my way in. The, the thing is, is even most of the ones that you have to swipe, uh, with enough power coming from one of these devices, it will actually just talk through the chip anyway, or, or talk through the, the reader anyway. So just because maybe you've got a reader at your corporation or what have you, and it's really hard to kind of get around to it to swipe, it doesn't matter. Um, these are very easy. You can actually solder an amp onto this guy and be probably 12, 13 inches away and just open the door from there. You're just not skipping a beat. So physical, when it comes to the RFID tags and the RFID readers, the, the physical, Securing the physical reader itself really doesn't help you much for a determined, determined individual. Can I answer your question? Okay. Okay, we had a workshop on this yesterday. Um, those of you that weren't there, you can ask some of the people that were there. I don't know if it went well or not, but nobody left. Um, 
which is kind of a good thing. Either they're like, oh yeah, I'm sitting here doing something else on there, and yeah, whatever. But long and short of it, you've got the 8266 chip and then ESP32 chip. The difference, the 8266 is about the size of my pinky nail, does 802.11 ABGN, and then can also, you can see the pins on the side here, can actually access those, chip, those pins. So things like running a motor, stepper motor, uh, reading a temperature sensor. What I mentioned yesterday in the workshop was a buddy of mine has actually designed a complete uh, sprinkler system around ESP8266 chips. So he's got a web interface that they all talk to, but then, and he can talk via Wi-Fi to these devices, but essentially what it's doing is he's got a, a moisture sensor stuck into the ground, and then he's got another one that is a heat sensor. So basically it's, it's day or it's night. Georgia, it gets hot. And so the key thing is, is he wants to water his lawn when the moisture is at a certain level, and then he doesn't want to do it during the day because he's one of those guys that says it fries his lawn and everything, you know, he's, everything's perfect in his lawn. Um, but you can do everything from that to one of the things that we did yesterday was a captive portal. Wireless access point, you connect to it, and then it captures the DNS requests that your computer's um, sending and redirects you to the web page on that captive portal. All on this guy. These guys are cheap, uh, 11 bucks. Can run our LiPo battery. Uh, who, how many of you were here last year? Okay, for those of you that were here last year, you've got this and a beautiful setup. The badge they had last year was the best badge I've ever seen at any con, and I've been to a lot of them. Running off three AA batteries, everything you need to do, pretty much everything that I was just talking about as far as a weatherproof, um, weatherproof container and everything else, they gave it to you last year. Um, the ESP32, it's a follow-on chip. It does not replace it. It's a little bit more expensive. This thing's gonna be about 15 bucks mounted on this board, but it also does Bluetooth 2.0. So Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy. So you can actually throw this guy into promiscuous mode. He's got a dual core processor. It's running at 1.2 gigahertz. Again, about the size of my thumb. So I would highly encourage you, again, um, evil twin or evil, evil maid attacks, man in the middle attacks. Uh, at Hacker Halted last year, we had a bunch of 8266s all over the Hyatt Hotel in Atlanta. And it said Hyatt, and there was a space between the T and the T, public. And people were con connecting to it all the time. We had a little form in there. They would type in their last name. Then it would hand them off to the real one. I, mean, I want to stay out of jail. But ultimately, it was a proof of concept. And what are you going to do about something like that? I mean, without having a radius server, you know, et, et cetera. I mean, there's ways to secure wireless, but it's not practical for a public hotel and a lot of those, you know, a bunch of other installations. Um, again, my workshop slide deck will be up shortly, and you can read all about that. Um, I've got a bunch. Uh, they've got a bunch to give away, and you can go to town. Okay, CAN bus, again, uh, one thing that the ESP32 board also has is it supports the complete CAN bus language. All you need to do is actually get the cabling and power it and that ESP32 can talk CAN to your car. Again, that's what I use to shut the damn check engine light off on my car. Um, you, there used to be, and there still is, a bunch of Arduino shields, a bunch of other stuff that you could buy and it's still out there. Just get yourself an ESP32 board and some cables and download some code that somebody else wrote on the internet. If you improve it, send the better code to him. That's the way open source works, right? Perfect. Okay, some other notable devices. Face Dancer. If you really want to dive into USB fuzzing and uh, USB testing, hardware testing, then 
Uh, Face Dancer allows you to take a device. By the way, this is how the PS4 got hacked. And um, prior to that, the, there was an Xbox model that got hacked. USB into the Face Dancer, from the Face Dancer into the computer. And any Python app or anything that you run on your computer looks like a USB endpoint. Plus, you can blast it the other way and see how badly that USB device screams. Okay, uh, there's a link for you as far as some um, uh, examples, etc. And then uh, we got some links to GoGo -Go here. So when you, if you want to download the slides, pretty much everything that I talked about, as far as examples, things like that, explanations are all here. And I've been blinking red for a minute. Um, so I think that's it. So we got like maybe a minute and a half for questions? Yeah, we have time for questions. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, y'all should have sat here. Yeah, look. Be up here with the cameras. This one in particular is pretty cool. Uh, this guy, Hacker Arsenal. Uh, I actually can't pronounce his name, but he had an eighty-dollar custom device that was built off an ESP32 board and did everything from man in the middle attacks to uh, custom portals, etc. The cool thing is, is that he did one run of them and when he ran out of them, he posted the firmware up so that you can download the firmware, flash your ESP32 device that you buy for 15, 20 bucks. And, and I say 15 to 20 bucks because again, you get what you pay for sometimes with this stuff from China and make your own device. So uh, hardware, it, again, software is cool. Being able to sit there and you know, whatever. But everybody's watched Mr. Robot. He does more hardware than he does software. So uh, if you are not integrating hardware into both your red team and your blue teaming, 8266. Drop those all over the place. Who's connecting to them? Uh, somebody, I don't know where he went, has a beautiful sketch or application that he flashed to his 8266, and he's watching every single beacon frame, even hidden SSIDs. You can drop that thing out in the middle of nowhere, connect to it via web page, download the text file, you're good to go. And you can have them all over your campus and set up a mesh. So, poor man's um, IDS. No questions? Okay. All right. Pretty tough crowd. <laughs>